After a nice vacation and then two weeks of getting my butt handed to me by a head cold, I finally feel good enough and I've had the time to get back into the shop. So the next part in my banjo project is to make the studs that the change gears will actually ride on. As you can see here, it's a fairly straightforward looking part, but does have a few things that could be difficult. Um, it's threaded M8 on one end, then it's got the shoulder that mounts against the banjo itself. A section turned down to a very specific diameter. In this case, this is probably the more tricky part of the, of the, uh, the stud, is that this diameter is plus or minus two tenths, which means I'm going to be using some sandpaper or emery cloth, whichever you might have. And then it's threaded M6 at this end. Now, this wouldn't normally be a problem for me, but recently I picked up a tailstock die holder, so threading these metric threads on my imperial lathe will be no problem. So with that being said, let's go over to the lathe and get started. I've gone ahead and turned several of the blanks down off camera, and that's allowed me to refine the process that I've been using to do it, so now I'm able to make them quite a bit faster than I was the first one. So let me show you what I've got going here. So the first step is to get the blank mounted. And one of the tricks I've been using is set the jaw up or the chuck up so that the two jaws, there's two jaws down. And then you slide the part out just till it touches the cutter. This is the cutter I'm going to use for pretty much all of the turning on this blank in this setup. Now what I've done, as you can see down here, yeah, you can see this off camera. I've got my dial indicator set up. And what I did is I left myself a tolerance of 10 thousandths of an inch. So I can come back and face this part off, and then I'm going to center drill it so that I can mount the live center in it, because I'm going to have to do quite a bit of heavy turning on this. But what this does is it sets it in such a way that now I now have a fresh reference, a known position relative to the dial indicator for this entire part, because I can sit, basically gauge everything off this face that was cut by this tool. So it's as good, the accuracy I'm going to get is as good as the accuracy of this dial indicator. So let's get started on that. So the first diameter I have to turn down is the one that's eventually going to be turned into a hex so that I can fasten this to the actual banjo. And that diameter is 850 thousandths. The next diameter is the actual journal diameter that the bushings are going to ride on. Which needs to stop there, so I'll put a little witness mark. And I've got quite a bit to take off on this. 450,000, so I'm going to take a couple, for this lathe, really heavy cuts of 100 thousandths off the radius or 200 thousandths off the diameter.
let this sit for a minute because it's really hot and then I'll come back and mic it and see why I have to take off for finish cuts. I've gone ahead and taken one cleanup pass and now I'm going to come back and take the finishing pass. I'm going to go down, take nine thousandths off. When I get down here, I'm going to go over just a little bit. I've left a five thousandths extra space here. I'm going to plunge in to clear out this radius down here, a few thousandths, and then I'm going to back feed out and clean up this face. See how much I have to take off yet with abrasives. I have three tenths to take off yet with abrasives, so I'll do that now. Make sure I get it nice and clean so there's no grit on it before I make it again. And that's all it took. Just that couple seconds with that 220 grit, uh, sorry, the 220 grit wet dry paper brought it in tolerance. So the next step is to go ahead and cut the thread relief groove. I've already gone ahead and positioned this little tiny parting tool. It's 45 thousandths of an inch wide and the, the groove I need to make is 125. So I'm going to take three plunges with this and that'll make the groove that I need. That's it for that. Next step is going to be to put the right tool on and then come back and turn this section down. I'll do some of it with the center in place, but then the diameter is so small I actually have to remove the center to get the last little bit off. I'll mic this real quick to double check my work. And that is within tolerance. So let me break this down and I'll switch the lathe over and we're going to thread this. One of the oddities of my lathe is that while the lead screw is imperial, everything else on the lathe is metric. That's why I decided I would actually make these studs and have them have metric threads to keep them uniform with everything else. But if you've ever threaded um, 
made metric threads, I should say, on an imperial lathe or vice versa, you know it's not fun. Especially when you're threading to a shoulder or you are doing a lot of them because you can't disengage the half nuts. Thankfully, because these are such small threads, M6 and M8, I can use one of these. And if you haven't seen one of these before, this is a, a tailstock die holder. Let me back it up here and get it off. There we go. It's really nothing more than a Morse taper with a straight shank sticking out of it. And this part, there you can see the die. It's just basically a hollow cylinder that will slide over this and has a slip fit. And basically, you know, put it on here and you just slide it forward. It'll bite and then it'll thread up the shoulder for you. And the benefit of this is, since it's free spinning, when it hits something like the shoulder like this, if you just let go of it, it will not damage anything. Now, there are some nicer higher end ones of these, but I actually don't think I would want to use one because they're actually, I don't know if they call it splined or they have a key that basically once they start, you don't even have to do anything. They just self-feed and they are, um, because of the key, I should say, just, they just self-feed. Now, if you had a lathe that you could stop it real fast, that'd be nice, but on mine, it's just going to spin down. There's no brake, so that would be disastrous because it would just run up, self-feed into the shoulder, neither damage or break the part or potentially break the die indicator holder. Or sorry, not the die indicator holder, the die holder. So let's, let me put this back up here, get it really where I want it. And then we'll thread this. There we go. Push the tailstock out too far. So I've got this as low as it'll go, 125 RPMs. Just a little tap magic. And because it's so small, I can feed this by hand. Just push on, let it bite in. There it just went then, and there it's locked up. So I can stop the lathe. Reverse the spindle, turn it back on, back it off. I'll clean the chips out for good measure and we'll run it up one more time. Now I can just use my fingers because the bulk of the material has been removed. That's all there is to it. I'll take this out, we'll chamfer the edges, and then this part's done for this setup. I've gone ahead and cleaned up the lathe and then switched over to my 5C collet chuck so that I can hold the, the now turned and polished diameter so I don't mess it up. So let me uh, zoom you in close and I'll show you what we have going on here. This end of the stud has a lot of machining processes that need to be done to it. The first step is to turn this section, so the section between this face and this face, down to a length that's within tolerance. Now there's three individual segments technically on here. Two of them have a tolerance of plus or minus five thousandths and the other one has a tolerance of plus zero minus fifteen. So I've got a lot of room to work. So I'm just going to aim for the optimal, add all three of them up and I consider that the, the optimal if you will. I've got the part in place so that I can just get my mic in and measure this because I'll need to do that not only to get this part to this length, but when I come back and machine the flange I have to do the same thing. So the first step here is going to be to face this to length, which is what we'll do now.
As you might have heard while I was facing off the part, I was just starting to verge on chatter, and that's mainly because with the 5C chuck on and then the part stuck out as far as it is, and then the smaller diameter, it's at the limit of rigidity for this lathe. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and center drill this so I can support the work some. Should let me go a little faster. Should give me a better surface finish. Now that I have the live center in place, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is basically all of this material you can see that's still got the mill finish on it. Almost all of that needs to go away. Something like, what do I have here? 700 thousandths has to come off the diameter. So I've got a lot of material removed. I'm going to do that with a roughing tool here, and then I'm going to come back and rough in the shoulder. So this will take just a minute or two. With this diameter down to size for threading, I now need to go ahead and thickness this shoulder and cut the thread relief groove. And what I'm going to use is this custom ground high speed steel tool bit. And it's actually one of the benefits of high speed steel, why I love my carbide tools, is that I've got to get this thread relief down in here and then clear this big shoulder. And the best way to do that for me is this custom tool bit. So as you could probably hear, I still got a little bit of chatter and that's just because of the extreme stick out with the collet chuck and then the part and everything else. But I left myself a little extra so I'm going to go ahead, clean this up, mic it real quick and then I'll come back and I'll bring it down to size. So just like the other end of the stud, the next step is to go ahead and use the tailstock die indicator to thread it, and then I'll come back and I'll chamfer everything, and then this part will be done and ready to move on to the final step at the mill, which is to create the hex.
so that is all of the turning on this stud. As you can see there, M8 this side, M6 this side, shoulder is the proper dimension, the, the bearing surface is the proper diameter. Uh, this is one of the nuts that the M8 screws into. I machined these all off camera. I didn't think you guys needed to see me make little tiny blocks and put a big threaded hole in them. Threads in nice and cleanly. So the next step for this part is to go over to the mill. Well, I should say, after I get these other, there's three more to go, three studs left. Get those turned down to size. The next step is to go over to the mill and then machine the hex that I will use to lock this down to the banjo. I've gone ahead and pulled the 5C collet out of the lathe, broke out the 5C hex collet block, and mounted the workpiece up here in the vise. I'm going to go ahead now. What I've done, I've got the mill set up. I've already done a couple pieces off camera. I'm going to take a roughing pass on all five sides, and then I'm going to come back and take a five thousandths of an inch finishing pass. that's it. All I got to do is take it over to the bench and deburr it. I've gone ahead and deburred all of the um, studs um, and cleaned up all the machines. So let me show you how this works. So the banjo, one of the slot nuts that I machined off camera, finished stud. It just gets tightened down with a 19 millimeter wrench. Again, I should probably mention that since this is only 85 thousandths of an inch, you don't, if you should be cranking down on this or you'll just strip it. One of the uh, bushings or carriers, whichever you prefer to call it, with two gears mounted. And then a piece of scrap brass that's acting as a nut right now. There we go. If everything was to tolerance and within spec, there should be about five thousandths of clearance side to side. And then there's exactly 1.1 thousandths of an inch difference in diameter between the inside of the bushing and the outside of the stud, which should be a plenty fits, you know, it's loose enough that you can get a thin oil film in there, but big enough that if there's any kind of thermal expansion of the parts, you're not going to seize anything up. So as you can imagine, the next video will be the last video in the series, and it's going to be making a bunch of these nuts that will be used to hold the uh, gear bushing in place. Mm -hmm.